Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Deep Dive. Uh, before we jump in today, I really just wanted to take a second and say a huge thank you, seriously, to our amazing Iceni community. Your support, it honestly means everything to us. It's what keeps us going, you know, digging into these topics and trying to bring you stuff that's current and uh, relevant. And yeah, a massive shout out to every single one of you tuning in. We really appreciate you being here. If you like what we do, if you enjoy these deep dives, uh, please do hit that like button, share it around maybe with someone who'd find it interesting and definitely subscribe so you don't miss what's coming up. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's genuinely great seeing the engagement. It definitely motivates us to, you know, make these sometimes tricky subjects as clear as we can. Absolutely. All right. So what do we got lined up for today? We are diving deep into F1 hybrid cannabis seeds. You've probably heard the term floating around, right? We've gathered uh, quite a few sources to really try and get a handle on what they are, how they're made, and, well, why they're getting so much attention lately. So the mission for you, our listener, is to come away with a really solid, um, easy-to-grasp idea of F1 cannabis hybrids without needing a PhD in genetics afterwards. Exactly. We want to pull out the key bits, give you the context so you understand why these seeds are, well, kind of a big deal. Okay, let's kick things off with the absolute basics then. What exactly is an F1 cannabis hybrid? Right. So uh, in simple terms, an F1 hybrid is the very first generation. That's the F1. It stands for first filial. First filial. Okay. Yeah. It's the offspring you get when you cross two different, and this is the important part, two different inbred parent strains. Those original parents are called the P1 generation. You'll see this definition laid out pretty clearly in sources like uh, F1 Cannabis Seeds and that GTR Seeds Guide for Growers. Gotcha. So is it kind of like like crossing two specific dog breeds, you know, yeah. like a Labradoodle, first generation? You expect certain traits. That's actually a really good analogy. Yeah. Just like with dog breeding, the whole point with F1 Cannabis is to combine specific desirable traits from two carefully selected parent lines. And the goal is to get a first generation of plants that's really consistent and predictable. Okay, consistency. Makes sense. Now, let's uh, dig a bit deeper into the science. You mentioned inbred parent lines. What does that actually involve? Right. So these inbred lines, or IBLs, they're like the essential building blocks for making F1s. The process starts with a stable cannabis strain that already has traits you like. Then you repeatedly self-pollinate it. Self-pollinate. So the plant pollinates itself. Exactly. Over several generations. And doing this again and again, uh, it pushes the genetics towards what's called homozygosity. That just means for any particular gene, the plant ends up with two identical copies, or alleles. One from each parent, which in self-pollination is itself. Both the uh, F1 cannabis seeds piece and the GTR guide talk about this. So you're essentially purifying the line, locking in those specific traits by making its genes almost identical copies. That's a good way to put it, locking them in. And this genetic purity in the parent lines is crucial because when you then take two different homozygous IBLs and cross them, the resulting F1 hybrid gets two different versions of each gene, one version from each parent line. And having those two different versions, that state is called heterozygosity. Heterozygosity, okay. Yeah, and that heterozygosity is a big reason why F1 hybrids often have unique characteristics and that uh, extra vigor people talk about. It's mentioned in F1 cannabis seeds. It sounds like creating these stable IVLs must take, well, quite a while. Oh. It's definitely a commitment. GTR Seeds, for instance, says they spend around three years developing each inbred line. Three years? Wow. Yeah, before it's even ready to be used for making F1s, you need that time to really ensure the line is stable and the traits are predictable. That Frontiers article on genomics also hints at the, you know, the dedication needed. Okay, so you spent years developing these parent lines. What are the payoffs? What are the main advantages of making F1 hybrids? Well, probably the biggest advantage people see is the uh, the incredible uniformity in the F1 plants. You right. know, if you grow traditional cannabis seeds, you often get a lot of variation between plants, different heights, different structures. Yeah, like a mixed bag sometimes. Exactly. But with F1 hybrids, the plants tend to be remarkably similar to each other. Very consistent phenotypes. The F1 cannabis seeds source actually has a useful table comparing them side by side on this. That makes intuitive sense. If the parents are super uniform, the first kids should be too. What else? Are there other benefits growers look for? 
Definitely. Besides uniformity, F1s often boast higher yields and they tend to grow faster. They're generally more stable, more resilient too. They can handle stresses like uh, fluctuations in environment a bit better. Right, that hybrid vigor thing you mentioned. Precisely. That's heterosis or hybrid vigor. We can touch on that more. It's mentioned in the Frontiers paper and sort of implied by GTR seeds as well. And interestingly, some studies, like one on hemp F1s, actually showed they produce significantly more biomass than their parent lines, which is, you know, huge for commercial growers. More biomass, faster growth, more uniform. Mm, that's Sounds pretty good. So F1 is the first cross. What if you, like, cross those F1 plants together? Do you get F2s? You do. But that's where things change quite a bit. As the F1 Cannabis Seeds Info explains, when you start crossing those F1 hybrids with each other, you get the F2 generation. And because the F1s were heterozygous, remember, carrying two different versions of genes, the F2s start showing a lot more genetic variation. Those different gene versions start recombining in all sorts of ways. Ah, so you lose that predictability you worked so hard for with the F1. You got it. Uniformity decreases significantly. It's like shuffling the genetic deck again. Now, later generations like F3 or F4, if you select carefully, you might start to stabilize certain traits again. But you generally don't get that same high level of consistency as the initial F1 cross. And here's another key difference. If you try to self-pollinate an F1 hybrid plant, the seeds you get are often, well, either not viable or they produce really unstable, unpredictable offspring. That's a really important point. So unlike regular seeds, you can't just save seeds from your F1 plants and expect the same crop next time. Nope. That consistency and vigor are really tied to that specific first generation cross. To get more F1s with those desirable traits, breeders have to go back to their original, carefully maintained inbred parent lines and make that cross all over again every time. Right, right. Okay, let's swing back to the science that Frontier's article mentioned genomics. How has understanding the actual cannabis genes changed F1 breeding? Oh, genomics has been a game changer. Massively. See, historically, breeding involved crossing different land races. Those were like the original locally adapted cannabis types. Kind of like the wild ancestors. Sort of, yeah. Regional varieties. Crossing those created what you might call pseudo F1s, but they often weren't truly stable or uniform. Growers often had to rely on cloning, taking cuttings to keep the traits they liked. So they weren't true F1s in the modern sense. Not with the kind of predictability we're talking about now. True F1s depend on those really pure homozygous inbred lines. And developing those lines has been hugely sped up by our ability to actually analyze the cannabis genome. Mm -hmm. Seed companies now use methods like uh, keeping clones of the parent plants, exact genetic copies to make sure they can recreate those specific F1 crosses reliably. And I think the article mentioned DNA barcoding. Mm -hmm. How does that fit in? Yes, DNA barcoding is a really neat molecular tool. The Frontiers paper mentions it. It helps breeders accurately identify strains and, crucially, understand the genetic background, like the subspecies composition, of their parent lines. Knowing if a parent is more indica or sativa leaning at a genetic level, for instance, helps make much more informed crosses. It's about precision. Precision breeding. Yeah. And you brought up heterosis again, hybrid vigor. Can you unpack that a little more for F1 cannabis? Sure. Heterosis is this really interesting biological effect where the F1 offspring often performs better. It's superior in certain traits compared to either of its inbred parents. Better than both parents. How? Yeah. It can show up as like faster growth, bigger plants, maybe better resilience, even improved fertility sometimes. The Frontiers article really emphasizes this as a key reason for making F1s. The idea is that by combining the different genetic strengths of the two diverse inbred parents, you mask any potential weaknesses, those less desirable recessive traits that might have been present in the parent lines. And you get this boost, this enhanced performance in that first generation. Wow. So the combination itself unlocks something extra. Kind of, yeah. And to really leverage this, breeders use tools like molecular markers, things called SSRs and SNPs. They're like specific flags or signposts in the DNA. Right. The article mentioned those. Exactly. These markers let breeders select for desirable traits at the genetic level even before the plant grows. It helps them develop better parent lines and also check how stable and homozygous those lines actually are. It's all about refining the process. And speaking of refining, what about those all-female F1 seeds? That sounds incredibly practical. Oh, it's a huge deal for growers, especially those focused on flower production. Basically, the technique involves taking an inbred female plant and chemically tricking it into producing male flowers that make pollen. But because it started as a female, that pollen only carries female X chromosomes. 
So when you use that pollen to fertilize another inbred female plant, all the resulting F1 seeds are guaranteed to be female, XX. So no more worrying about male plants popping up and pollinating the females. Exactly. It saves growers a lot of time and effort identifying and removing males and ensures pretty much every plant is a potentially high-yielding flower producer. Both Frontiers and that Arab 346 study mentioned this technique. That's clever. So it's clear that yield and efficiency are big goals. But breeders aren't only chasing yield with F1s, are they? What else are they breeding for? No, definitely not just yield. That's often key. But the goals are much broader now. Breeders are working really hard to create F1s with very specific cannabinoid profiles. You know, high THC for recreational markets or maybe specific ratios of THC to CBD for medical users. Tailoring the effect, basically. Precisely. Both the Frontiers paper and that FPL's article talk about this targeted breeding for cannabinoids. Plus, they're breeding for other things, too, like resistance to specific diseases, certain growth habits, or even, in the case of hemp, for high fiber content and very low THC levels. It really is becoming quite specialized. It sounds like cannabis F1 breeding is basically catching up to what's been standard practice in other parts of agriculture for ages. That's a really sharp observation, and you're spot on. That GTR Seeds Guide makes this exact point. F1 hybrid breeding isn't new. It's a cornerstone of modern agriculture. Think about corn, tomatoes, rice. Many staple crops rely heavily on F1 hybrids for uniformity, yield, and performance. So cannabis is really adopting these established, proven breeding strategies from the wider world of agriculture. So looking ahead then, what's next? What does the future look like for F1 cannabis breeding? Where's the research heading? Well, the future looks uh, pretty exciting, honestly, and it's tightly linked to continued progress in genomics and biotech. As those Frontiers and FPL's articles point out, we're getting more and more complete cannabis genome sequences available. And that data is powering the use of even more advanced tools like uh, CRISPR gene editing. CRISPR, right. That allows for really precise changes to the DNA. Exactly. Genome editing could let breeders make very targeted improvements. For example, tackling disease susceptibility powdery mildew is a common one they mention. Always a pain for growers. Right. So imagine being able to edit the plant's own genes to make it resistant, potentially without needing chemical sprays or complex crossbreeding. That's the kind of potential people are exploring. The FPL's paper also mentions ongoing work in things like tissue culture and genetic transformation methods, basically, lab techniques to help introduce genetic changes and speed up the whole breeding cycle. And that other study, Arab 346, that looked at inheritance in hemp hybrids. Yes, that one gave some useful clues about how physical traits like plant height or branching are passed down in hemp crosses and how those traits relate to things like total biomass or cannabinoid production. It really just underlines how complex it can be to breed for multiple desirable traits at once and why understanding the genetics behind things like flowering time is so important for getting that uniform F1 product. Wow. It definitely feels like we're just seeing the beginning of what's possible here with F1s and all these new tools. I think that's fair to say. It's a field that's moving really fast, pushed by both the science and the market demand for better, more specific cannabis. Okay, let's try and wrap this up then. What are the absolute key takeaways about F1 hybrid cannabis seeds you want people to remember? Okay, main things. One, F1 hybrids come from crossing two distinct, highly stable inbred parent lines. That's crucial. Two, this gives them big advantages. Uniformity, the plants are very similar, stability and resilience, and often better yield and faster growth. That's the hybrid vigor. Three, unlike regular seeds, F1s don't breed true. You can't reliably save seeds from them for the next generation and get the same results. And four, modern genomics and biotech tools are playing a huge role in making the development of these F1s much more precise and efficient. And why does this matter to you, the listener? Well, understanding F1s is becoming pretty essential if you're interested in modern cannabis, really. Whether you're a grower looking for consistency, a consumer wanting specific effects, or just curious about plant science, this represents a big shift. It's about moving towards more predictable, tailored cannabis cultivation, which opens up a lot of possibilities. Okay, so here's a final thought for you to chew on as we finish up. With this increasing precision in breeding, using F1s and tools like genomics, what could the future of cannabis actually look like? Think about it for farming, for medicine, even for recreational use. Hmm. Where could this level of control take us? It's definitely something to think about. The potential impacts are pretty wide ranging. Absolutely. Well, thank you for walking us through all that. It was fascinating. My pleasure. Glad to talk about it. And a huge thank you again to all of you for joining us on The Deep Dive. If you found this interesting or useful, 
Please do remember to hit like, share it with others, and subscribe for more explorations. We'll catch you on the next dive.